Um, so uh, first of all, I just want to give you a brief uh, overview of where uh, EPFL is uh, is located. So uh, so this is EPFL on a on a nice and sunny day. This is the Highness Lab. Uh, this is the highest uh, mountain in, in in Europe, Mont Blanc. And here are the excellent ski resorts that finally got snow now. So it's outside the lab. I would really also say that this is a very very nice uh, place to to live. And and the lake here that is uh, Lake Geneva, um, one of the biggest lakes in Switzerland. Uh, and today's agenda from the Highness Lab will be that that I'll give an introduction to to peptidic macrocycles and synthetic approaches for preparation in, in high throughput. Uh, then Misha will carry on and see how we can can upgrade these uh, solid phase peptide synthesizers. Uh, finally, uh, Edward will will give an, uh, in some case studies on how we've uh, used this technology towards uh, biological targets. Um, and the vision in the Highness Lab is that we would like to design uh, peptidic macrocycles that are now able to cross the cellular membrane and ideally bind challenging drug types within the cell. Um, and uh, the drugs that like the, the, the type of proteins that we want to target are the so-called uh, uh, undruggable targets, where if we look at small molecule drugs, uh, there has been like, of course, in, uh, in literature and also in the clinic, several examples of, of uh, uh, small molecules that are very good binders towards proteins with defined binding, binding clefts and that are still able to enter the, the cell. However, if you look at the like lesser defined uh, protein uh, binding sites, uh, these can be easily accessed by uh, monoclonal antibodies and peptides derived from mRNA or phase display that have a larger surface area and therefore able to bind these type of, uh, of uh, protein surfaces. However, these are not able to go inside the, the cell. And this is where we, we sort of want to uh, try and cover these more challenging uh, uh, targets with, with the macrocycles. And the reason why we want to do, uh, why we work on macrocycles, uh, first of all, compared to linear precursors, macrocycles have a much greater affinity or can have a much greater affinity towards targets uh, due to a less of an entropic penalty upon binding, simply from the more rigid uh, structure that they, that they possess. Uh, and finally, despite being very large, uh, there are several cases where macrocycles are indeed uh, showing cellular permeability. The key example in literature is probably the investigation of cyclosporin and, uh, and also other types of very large, larger, like above 1,000 Dalton uh, macrocycles are able to, to show cellular uh, permeability. Uh, and the reason why this is possible uh, is that, uh, or at least that's one of the hypotheses, is that, that the macrocycles can exhibit sort of a chameleon-like uh, structure where they can, upon entering the lipid bilayer, uh, bore into molecular hydrogen bonds and therefore, there is much less of a salvation penalty upon passing through the apolar environment, leading to more uh, compound paths going through the cell. Um, uh, this has led to also like a beyond rule of five space that we are working in in, in macrocycle research, where uh, like Lipinski back in '97 and later published in 2001 uh, gave like the definitions or the criteria that you need to to at least obey for the likeliness of a molecule to be orally available. But like for for um, for macrocycles, we indeed see several examples where we are disobeying the Pinsky's rule of five, but but still show permeability. So there is like a greater span of of molecular weight, polar surface area, and also hydrogen bond donors we can have in these molecules, and and still have hopes of having things go through the cell membrane. Um, however, if we look at, at at the screening of of macrocycles, uh, it's it's very limited what that is available of commercial libraries compared to the billions, sorry, the millions of compounds that you can uh, do uh, for fragment based or or small molecule based screenings. Uh, and uh, one of the reasons is probably that, that the synthesis of of macrocycles can be cumbersome due to the need for chromatographic purification steps uh, uh, of each individual compound. Um, and this is why we want to try and, and, and uh, emphasize on new techniques to produce uh, macrocycles in high throughput. Um, and the way we want to do this is by working with the combinatorial synthesis of cyclic peptides. So let's make a number example here. If, if we create or synthesize a thousand peptides, uh, we could uh, cyclize them with 10 different linkers, already increase the diversity tenfold. And if we furthermore could do a lateral diversification, for instance, here with 10 different building blocks, we could have a number example where we would already have 100,000 cyclic peptides. So we try to like make these combinatorial uh, uh, moves to create a large chemical space to, to create as diverse possible macrocycles to hopefully be able to cover a, a chemical space where we can identify the binders towards these challenging targets we're looking for. 
Um, and the way we want to go about this at the moment is, is through the use of dithyl peptides uh, that we would either uh, oxidize to, the, to a disulfide bridge or cyclize uh, with the bis electrophilic linkers, as, as shown in this slide here. Uh, but one of the requirements we have in our research is that, that uh, we must be able to do this without any HPLC purification, meaning that we can do uh, crude screenings uh, and that we want to have no tax or any precipitation techniques required to be able to do so. Uh, and finally, the, the, the synthetic approach needs to be compatible with the micro well uh, plates. Um, and this is now possible uh, by the use of two different techniques that I'll explain today. One is uh, what is we refer to as cyclative uh, peptide release, which was published uh, here in uh, uh, last year, uh, mainly the work of, of former PhD student in Lab 7, where um, we work with the disulfide linked uh, resins that uh, we um, do standard FMOC based solid space peptide synthesis in, just so we have an uh, order of direction here. This will be the N terminal of the peptide, and this style here will be the, like the second style. With the, sorry, this will be the C terminal of the peptide, and this will be the N terminal. Um, um, uh, we can do standard FMOC based uh, uh, chemistry with, with these resins, uh, but the nice thing about this is that upon deprotection with, with TFA, we can remove uh, side chain protecting groups. Uh, but uh, this dithyl link is, is stable enough to, to have only the, our, our linear peptide stay on, on the resin at, at this point. Uh, upon treatment with, uh, in this case, uh, alkaline DMSO solution, we can sort of release um, the peptides uh, through a disulfide bridge by an intermolecular attack uh, to afford uh, macrocyclic peptides through a disulfide bridge in, in, in excellent uh, crude purity. Um, another, um, another method that sort of um, um, come like uh, that we use uh, together with this technique is what we refer, refer to as a reductive peptide synth release. And it's uh, also published last year, the main work of, of, of Salt and, 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 and Ganesh in the, in the lab. Um, and, and, and here, the, the first steps are very similar to, to or like identical to, to what we saw for the cyclative release. But then through the use of a reducing reagent, we can reduce the peptides of the resin to get them in, in high purity. Um, and what uh, the nice thing about this is that the reducing reagent we use is 1,4-butane diethyl, which is uh, volatile. So upon a uh, speed backing step after, uh, um, after reduction, we can completely omit the butane diethyl that was in our mixture to get peptides of, of excellent purity. Uh, and working with diethyls, we also have a further advantage of them being able to then be cyclized with various types of bis electrophilic linkers to get uh, excellent uh, cyclic peptides of, of uh, excellent quality of cyclic peptides. And these are crude traces that I, I show here. Um, um, so with these methods in hand, we are now trying to, to uh, try and automate it towards uh, creating macrocycles in, in, in high throughput. Uh, and this is one of my main parts when I started my, my postdoc here, was to see how can we further expand this to make very diverse libraries and how can we do it so that we can make uh, high numbers also uh, using automation. So one of the things that I've done is that uh, we have um, previously worked uh, on the C-terminal end having uh, two uh, macapto uh, ethyl amine as the, uh, as the compound functionalized on the resin. But now we have uh, six different building blocks that we now can uh, functionalize onto the resin uh, um, uh, to create even more skeletal diversity in our macrocycles with synthesize. Um, um, so I will give a number example of, of some of the libraries we have now uh, that we are now able to do with this technique, and I won't go into the uh, the detail of the optimization, just how we we uh, we got to uh, how the results look in the end. But for instance, now we can synthesize uh, 384 peptides in one run, uh, and we have now all more than 300 amino acids in stock in in in, in the lab. Um, and then, for instance, we can cyclize that with with seven different bis electrophilic linkers to create. Uh, 2,688 macrocycles of, of, of very high skeletal uh, diversity. Um, and this goes very easily on the previously mentioned uh, Intavis synthesizer and Multipep2, now CEM, I should say, probably, uh, where we can do FMOC based solid phase chemistry, perform the uh, TFA deprotection and reductive release. And then the key step here is to afterwards transfer the compound into 384 polypropylene plates that are compatible with what we uh, what is called acoustic droplet ejection technology. Because when we start to work in thousands of compounds, it's very important that we are able to do this without any 
cumbersome uh, pipetting transfers. Uh, and therefore, we can use uh, uh, sound or acoustic vibrations to transfer very precisely nanoliter droplets from one compound to another. So everything that I'm talking about from now on will be using these 384 well plates um, so that, that there's nothing that requires any pipetting uh, from this step on. Um, so uh, what we can do for cyclization is to uh, transfer these dithyl peptides into new plates. And uh, what is unique now, since we have thiols, is that we can determine the concentration after, like a little bit unlike the spot, we can now determine the exact concentration of each individual peptide in our synth uh, synthesis uh, by uh, looking at the amount of thiol by element reagent. Um, then we can distribute uh, precisely 40 nanomoles of each peptide into, into new plates. And however, a downside usually with, with dithyl peptides is that over time they, they can oxidize uh, or reoxidize in, in DMSO. Uh, so therefore we can redo this peptide reduction step using butane dithyl, but easily after speed vac, we still have then fully reduced peptides in, in the place that we will then run our reactions in. Uh, for cyclization, we can do this using bulk dispensing where we add our bis-electrophilic linkers. We perform a macrocyclization uh, for two hours at room temperature, quench any excess linker with, with the beta mercaptor ethanol to afford uh, cyclic peptide macrocycles in these uh, 384 well plates of excellent quality. Um, and just to get a sense of how this is done, this is done in full automation using a robotic access station. So here you see an, uh, this echo that uses the, the acoustic dispensers. Here you see the, um, the automated liquid handler that is also here in the GIF on the right. And then we can plate, like have all the plates stacked here so they can be, everything can be moved around using this uh, robotic arm that we have. Um, and you can see here, just exemplified that we have macrocycles of excellent, good pure, crude purity. And of course, just to mention, we, we don't get rid of the linker, but we simply quench any reactive ex linker species, but this is still providing macrocycles of excellent, sufficient purity for, for later screening. Uh, because uh, upon redissolving the libraries in DMSO, we sort of have source plates that we can screen towards any uh, any desired protein target that we, we would like in, in and that we usually do in 15, 36 well plates. Uh, so this is a label-free screening method that we can use uh, in very high throughput. Uh, so to wrap up, now we are trying to, 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 to take fragments that, that we know bind to a certain target of our interest that we want to mix with these very diverse uh, building blocks that we can provide to, to create li libraries of any desired chemical space that we would like to, to target proteins with. And then through high throughput screening campaigns, it will get back to some of them. We now have several examples where we can get good binders towards uh, challenging targets. Uh, so like the workflow is now that we can synthesize linear peptides, uh, combinatorially cyclize them and screening them in a matter of, of like uh, days to weeks. And then of course, we still have a lot of the following work in, in hit validation, secondary assays and so on that we, that we do afterwards. But we really expand the throughput of what we can uh, do uh, with very limited uh, material. Uh, so with that, I will, uh, I will finish off and, and I'll be happy to take any questions. Uh, and then afterwards, uh, Misha will, will take over with an exciting new uh, synthesizer upgrade that we have uh, built for the lab.